Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today's video is in honor of Gordon Lightfoot, who passed away on May 1st of 2023. I've heard his music in passing before and always been very touched by the lyrics, but I've never done a deep dive analysis of his voice. So I'm hoping that in doing this, we'll all gain even more appreciation for his music together. Let's get to it. But tell me thoughts could tell Just like an old time movie About a ghost from a wishing well In a castle dark Or a fortress strong With chains upon my feet You know that ghost is me and Wow! I... It makes such a difference when you take a moment to just intensely listen to a vocal line. I, I feel like I'm discovering so many nuances that I didn't notice before. I, get, I think I heard this when I was younger. I think my dad used to play a lot of Gordon Lightfoot. And the lyrics are just fantastic, but there's so many tiny, tiny vocal things that he's doing that are totally fascinating and feel like it's created this incredibly unique style. Let's go back to the beginning and I'll pick some of those moments out. Just like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well. So first thing that really stands out to me is that the timbre is, it's like, He's got like some extra space in the back. It's actually almost slightly hollow at times and soft yet still clear. It's a very, very interesting timbre. And then add to that the way he's using these little slides in places, um, like well was there at the end, it did a little slide there. He's very specific about where those slides are happening. It's going by so quickly, it's almost hard to catch every one of them. Like, could the way he does a slide there, that's a really good example. It feels like this is very much a part of that signature sound. Right there, it's almost like a goal. Just like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well. And that's the same type of sight right there. Castle dark, or a fortress strong, the chains upon my feet. You know that ghost is me, and I will never be set free as long as I. It's such a haunting line. <laughs> the lyrics are amazing. They tell so much story with them. I understand this is a story about, I believe his marriage feeling that was written somewhere around a divorce. Um, like, wow, what a, <laughs> that's something that haunts a person's life, right? <laughs> it just sticks. Oh, and then to put that kind of melody with that, lyric it works together so well okay i'm gonna go back one more time to the beginning uh another thing to really notice is the way he's using vibrato it tends to be very very fast and when he was more earnest he actually took away some of the vibrato so it's more like when it opens up it gets vibrato but then when it's driving there's less <laughs> Just like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well in a castle dark or a fortress strong with chains upon my feet. You know that ghost is me, and I will never be set free as long as I. Can't see. <laughs> it's 
to it's just like it's just so touching. <laughs> like what gets songwriting? Okay. Um another really interesting thing that he does is he tends to um almost accent when he's moving pitches. I think this also is coming off as a slight accent because of how much diction he's using. He gives a lot of energy to his consonants, but he's not moving his mouth a ton for those consonants. So it almost comes out as like a teensy bit punchy, but like restrained punchy. It's very, very interesting. I, I find it fascinating how little his jaw is actually moving. Like we see movement in the lips, but the whole mouth isn't moving a ton because his jaw isn't actually opening up that much. I'll go back just a little bit again. You know that ghost is me. You see a little bit. It's not like a Pez dispenser. There's a very limited range of motion in the jaw. If I could read your mind, Tell your thoughts could tell <laughs> just like a paper bag. Oh my gosh. The kind in a drugstore would sell. Okay, I just, I love this angle that we have right now, this dual camera angle. It's so perfect, especially because we get to examine that jaw lip movement thing a little bit more. A lot of times when we're talking about jaw movement or mouth movement in singing, um, it's not, it isn't just about like how much, how do I put this? It's not just about uh, the range of motion, right? It's not about making overdone uh, motions to create enunciation. It can be about being precise and just energizing little bits. So he's really, he's in that precise energized kind of way. However, some other types of music, and even within this genre, I would say some other singers, they won't just energize by moving this um, with, with greater power and a more refined motion. Instead, they'll increase the range of motion. And so with him, I would say he's got probably about a finger's width space between his teeth. So if you're gonna go, ah, uh, and you have a finger that, that kind of is about where he stays. And sometimes you can even do this by taking your hand and putting it in the crux of your, uh, putting your chin in the crux of your hand and kind of push back like this. And you go like, oh yeah, there's a little bit of natural motion. By the way, your jaw doesn't just open this way. It swings down and back. Very, very important. Um, some people will go for two fingers between. Uh-huh. Uh, sometimes, you know, you'll go three, four. If you overextend, you tend to feel a pop out of the jaw up here at the hinge. So don't do that. That's way too much. A lot of people need to just learn how to sing with their jaw open more to achieve a better tone quality. But sometimes you don't need to. He's got this really fascinating tone quality that I feel is very unique. It's got a, like a signature stamp on it. So I wouldn't change anything about his tone quality. But he's achieving this partly by keeping his mouth more closed, yet not sacrificing his enunciation for that. So, uh, fascinating, again. Fascinating combo. Let's go back a little bit and check it out. Like there's a lot of punch behind the teeth. And the cool When you reach the point where the heartaches come, the hero would be me. The heroes often fail. Okay, you're back for that moment. <laughs> The me and the way he trails off on that is so touching. It's just like, ah, oh, it's delightful. And then there's also a great half spoken moment right after that. Where the heartaches come, the hero be me. The heroes ah! often fail. And you won't read that book again because the end is just too hard to take. Ooh, that is a great example of energizing 
um, but not necessarily through more movement. So and this is happening really with a bunch of different nasal consonants here, where there'll be some sort of closure in the front of the mouth, and the sound is actually exiting through the nose. When this happens, you can lose some of the sound energy, because you literally are making a closure for where the sound would normally exit. So if you want to keep a lot of energy in your line, you actually want to energize through a nasal consonant a little bit more. Wait for it. Often feel, and you won't read that book again because the end is just too hard to take. So we heard it in uh, again because the endings, the end of ending in the book again, actually the end of again becomes an M as he goes to because. This is really fun. This is really fun. This is actually something that singers who study Italian a bunch tend to learn and do. If you have an N that is going into a B, because a B is a bilabial consonant, B, meaning your lips come together for it, B, the N doesn't naturally go into the B. There's a closure of the lips that has to start to make the B. So the N will become an M before it goes to the B if you're singing the entire time. So you go, and <laughs> This is, sorry, <laughs> nerd moment. It's a really, really cool thing. It happens uh, a lot more often in Italian, but sometimes we'll see it cross over into other languages. Because the end is just too hard to take. Oh, I gotta go back a little bit more, sorry. The heroes often fail. There you go. You can see it so clearly. One more time. You won't read the book again because the end is just okay, again because. <laughs> read the book again because the end is just too hard to take. So what that achieves is a beautiful legato, meaning that everything is connected. We have this really long, steady line of sound. That is really great. It's something that helps keep your audience engaged the whole time. And I love that he did that while singing through mostly just one pitch. One more time. Oh, that's such a good one. <laughs> Look at that minimal job movement back. That was a great example. Gosh. I walk away like a movie star who gets burned in a three way script. Enter number two. Okay, let's take a deeper look at this legato and then the way sometimes it seems to bounce afterwards. This has to do, I think, largely with how he's enunciating. And because he's so specific about it, it really affects the entire phrase and the way he's telling the story. It's This is one of those moments where those tiny details add up to make such a huge difference. Okay, so we'll just work with this enter number two. This is a line where there is some legato, but not as much as a certain bounce and a little bit of a lilt in it. Enter number two. You can hear how enter fades away and then it gets a little more energy he even has like a little, uh, like a puff of air that re-energizes at number. number two. A little a bounce here. Queen, the play, the scene, the all the good things out in me. That line is a 
again, reflecting that incredible legato earlier. You can find all kinds of nasal consonants that he's really leaning into, energizing a ton, again, without making it feel like he's screaming at us. It feels, it feels like it's an intimate sound that is just really clear at the same time. A movie queen to play the scene all those nasal consonants, they make the legato gorgeous. And then bounce your hair. So there's an earnestness that happens in this part, right? A movie queen to play the scene of bringing all the good things out in me. That line, there's so much earnestness and like a desire that you hear, a longing in that line. The legato and those nasal little constants, the way he's energizing them, that gives us that underlying feeling of the emotion and the need. And then, but for now, love, let's be real. That's like, it drops that longing. You hear it just kind of bounce back down and you can feel that there's a reduction of energy and this disappointment that happens in the voice. That kind of detail, that's what turns this into a masterpiece. Let's go back and appreciate that whole bit once more. I walk away like a movie star who gets burned in a three-way script into number two. A movie queen to play the scene of bringing all the good things out in me. But for now, love, let's be real. Still line. But the feeling's gone and I just can't get it back. Oh my gosh. There's so much longing in that legato line. I love it. I love the way he's written glorious words. I also just love the guitar underneath. But then the way he's communicating that emotion with tons of vocal details, that is priceless. Wow. Okay, let's keep going. And I just can't get it back. You could read my mind, love. What a tale my thoughts could tell. Just like an old time there's that little slide off in movie as well it's so specific how he's doing these little slides especially now that i know how specific he is with legato and nasal consonants and heard those couple of slides at the beginning i'm listening to all of these tiny things and just feeling in awe of him wow that's so pretty <laughs> If you could read my mind, love, what a tale my thoughts could tell. And that first like an old time movie, by the ghost <laughs> from a wishing well. In a castle dark, or a fortress strong, with chains upon my feet, the story always ends. And if you read between the lines, you'll know that I'm just trying to understand the feelings that you have. This is such a cool contrast that he's doing throughout. Again, we had that really legato, urgent, there's like an urgency and the longing that he's expressing. And then this disappointment that just kind of bobbles down, essentially. <sighs> the story always ends. And if you read between the lines, you'll know that I'm just trying to understand. And you'll notice that with that urgency, the thing I talked about earlier, where he has a little more drive, he's taken away the vibrato there. It's like 
it, it's like the voice is less vulnerable in that moment. It's just like, I'm just feeling this, it is gonna come out. And then at the end of that phrase, a little bit of vibrato enters just the tiniest bit on the last note. And we hear a little more of that, um, almost like a shakiness of letting things go. And if you read between the lines, you will know that I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> There's that. The feelings that you met. I never knew I could feel this way. And I've got to say that I just don't get it. I don't know where we went wrong, but the feeling's gone. And I just can't get it. It's, it's so sad. Don't know where we went wrong, but the feeling's gone. I just can't get it back. Oh my gosh. Like, what a line that so many people can relate to at so many points in life. Oh man. Oh man. As somebody who's been through plenty of heartache, as I'm sure many of you, it's like you, if you live, you've had heartache. That's a stamp of the living. I think all of us can be together in it. But this line is just. It tugs at the heartstrings. both the feeling of loss that you get through the song, but also the loss of Gordon Lightfoot. He is such, he was such an incredible songwriter who left a huge impact in this world. I feel so grateful that we get to continually enjoy the music that he's left behind. I hope that you will join me in appreciating many, many songwriters in this playlist over here. We all have better lives because of the music that they make. So I hope that you will fall more in love with music today and for many, many days to come. <laughs>